Scotland's railway has seen much investment over the past few years, notably with the introduction of Class 385 units on ScotRail's principal routes, notably the flagship Edinburgh to Glasgow route. The units and the electrification scheme are a small piece of the puzzle of Transport Scotland's vision to aim for net zero emissions on Scotland's railway. So, join me as I check out these relatively new trains and ride the flagship route between Edinburgh and Glasgow, Scotland's two largest cities. So, without further ado, it's now time for us to get this show on the rails. Our journey today begins at Edinburgh Waverley Station, located in the heart of the city of Edinburgh, Scotland's capital city. Naturally, there is plenty to see or do around the station, given its location. Not only that, but there are extensive links with the city's bus network, as well as the Edinburgh tram route between Edinburgh Airport and the city centre. Well, I believe it's now time for us to go in and check out our service today. Waverley Mall can be found at the bottom of the first escalator as you enter the station. Not only are there plenty of eateries and cafes here, there are also plenty of essential and non-essential shops, both of which can prepare you for your journey. As well as Waverley Mall, there are also plenty of shops just opposite it to the left, although these are principally souvenir shops designed for tourists. The station itself dates back to the 1860s, and much of this history is still present within the station's design, notably with the pillars and the roof. The station has 20 platforms, although I do find it easier to navigate compared to some other stations. Not going to mention any names at <coughs> Birmingham. This reflects the high level of commuter traffic the station experiences, although despite being located in the capital city, it is not Scotland's busiest station, that title belonging to Glasgow Central. When nosing around the station, I also noticed one of the Giraffe About Town statues, one of 40 of which will be in place until August 2022. Platforms 13 to 18 are typically used for ScotRail services, serving other destinations in the Central Belt, as well as in the north of Scotland. Our train today will be departing from Platform 14. And on that note, it's now time for us to enter the platform and board our service to Glasgow, although it's worth noting that it has not yet arrived yet which gives us a bit of waiting time before we start travelling today. To the right can be seen some Class 170 Turbostar diesel trains, and to the left is a Class 158 diesel train, both of which are former workhorses of the Edinburgh to Glasgow Express route. These trains can now be found working local services within the Edinburgh area, as well as regional services throughout North Scotland which aren't electrified. And here comes our train, a Class 385 electric multiple which will be taking us along the fast route between Edinburgh and Glasgow. These units were built in three and four car formations by Hitachi between 2015 and 2019 and form, a ma and form part of Hitachi's AT200 family. These trains are a bit of an oddity on the UK rail network as Hitachi tends more to focus on intercity rolling stock building as opposed to regional units. Abellio ScotRail, the previous franchise holder, ordered these units to replace the Class 170s, Class 158s and Class 156 units. The units also replaced Class 314 trains on Glasgow Suburbans, as well as Class 365 trains, which were used as a stopgap pending late delivery of these trains. Right, now that our unit has completed a circuit from Glasgow, it's now time for us to board and take a look around. Our unit today is the Mark 1 variant of the class, of which 24 were built. The seating layout of the train is typically 2 plus 2, featuring tables. At the end of the first carriage, there is also a, bike, a generous space for bike users and a standard toilet. It's also worth noting that the Dash Zero units of the class have the same general interior concepts, the main difference being they are three cars in length and there is no first class seating and as such they tend not to be used on ScotRail Express services, such as the Edinburgh to Glasgow route. As we head through the third carriage of the train, it's worth noting that the seats themselves are the Fainzer ironing board seats, which are infamously known for being rather uncomfortable. 
The next the there is a universal is accessible toilet mind. in the last carriage, as well as a decent wheelchair accessible space for wheelchair users and those with reduced mobility. First class can be found at the very rear of the train, and features Fainza Sophia seats, which are generally more comfortable than the ironing board seats. It's also worth noting that you can press the button at the rear of the door to walk, walk between the units when in multiple, which is useful considering our unit today is two four carriage sets coupled together. Right, before we head off and take our seat, it's now time for us to look at our route for today. Our route today sees us travelling along the Glasgow to Edinburgh via Falkirk Line, the principal route between Scotland's two largest cities. We start at the capital city of Edinburgh before stopping at Haymarket, located just outside the city. After which, we then travel to Linlithgow, Polmont, Falkirk High, and Croy, and then finally into Glasgow Queen Street, Scotland's second largest city. Our expected arrival time into Glasgow is 13.37, with a total journey time of 52 minutes. And with that, it's now time for us to get our journey on the way and make our way to Glasgow. So, let's go. It's only a mere few minutes after leaving Edinburgh Waverley that we arrive into Haymarket, which is also located in the city of Edinburgh and is the second busiest station within the main city. Despite being so close to Edinburgh Waverley, the majority of services on this route call here, including ours, except for a few during peak hours. It's worth noting that just past Haymarket station is Haymarket Depot, where ScotRail maintains its large, di large diesel fleet, as well as Murrayfield Stadium, home of the Rugby Union and Scotland's largest stadium, with a seating capacity of over 67,000. Being an express service, this train does not stop at every single station along the route. An example being the first stop after Haymarket, which is Edinburgh Park. It's worth noting that this part of the route between Edinburgh and Glasgow was electrified back in 2010 as part of the Airdrie to Bathgate rail link project. As we delve further into the Scottish Central Belt, it's worth noting that the Glasgow to Edinburgh via Falkirk line was electrified in the late 2010s, with the first electric train, a Class 380, running on the line from December 2017. The Class 385 train we're on now fully took over the route, starting from late 2018 and ending in late 2019. Despite the electrification, I'm sure you'll agree that as with most of Scotland, the views are still spectacular. Approximately 20 minutes after leaving Edinburgh Waverley, we now stop at our first station outside of the city, which is Linlithgow. The rather large structure you can see pointing out of the trees in the background is the Linlithgow Palace, which dates back to the 15th and 16th centuries when the Royal Monarchs of Scotland resided there. Nowadays, it has fallen into ruin and is a popular tourist attraction and really reflects the ancient history that goes along with this historic town. Well, now that we've arrived into our second stop, I believe it's now time for a Know Your Seat to take a look around the train and its features. As mentioned previously, the seats are the Fainzer ironing board seats, and although these are notoriously known for being rather uncomfortable, I did find them to be better than other examples, such as the Class 387. The seats also have foldable armrests, both at the end and in the middle of each seat, which is pretty useful and expected from a premium service such as the Express. Not only can small coat hangers be found at the, end, at the right end of each seat, there are also similar coat hangers towards next to the windows of the train, making it rather flexible in terms of where you can hang your coats and bags. As for plug sockets, no need to worry, these are just below your seat. Although, for such a modern train, I was expecting USB ones too. Seat reservation card holders can also be found at the top of the seat, 
although these are rarely used, so I can imagine this is to future-proof the trains, should they move elsewhere. As well as overhead luggage racks, there is generous luggage space throughout the rest of the train, although, as can be seen, one of the cleaners did appear to use it as a place for storing rubbish. Yikes. Falkirk High is our second to last stop on our route to Glasgow today, and is one of two stations serving the town of Falkirk, the other being Falkirk Grahamstone. Ever guess where Falkirk High got its name from? Don't overthink it, as the name actually originates from the station being higher than the town itself. And yes, I'm actually serious about this. The station is located on the southern edge of the town, and is really close to the Union Canal, which also contains the Falkirk Wheel, a rotating boat lift that was constructed in the early 21st century as a link between the Forth and Clyde Canal and the Union Canal, something I really need to visit someday. Travelling further along the line, we are still treated to amazing views across the Scottish Central Belt. All of this is experience while travelling at the train's maximum speed of 100 miles an hour. Surprisingly, I found the journey so far to be relatively smooth, although stopping at stations, there does seem to be a slight jerk before the train comes to a complete stop. Anyways, I believe it's now time for us to check out one more thing, and that is the toilets. I thought I'd go for the standard toilet on this trip, as it is located right inside my carriage, making it the easier of the two to be accessed. Right, door locked, and we can begin. Well, my initial impressions of the toilet are that it is relatively clean, and I do like the amusing signs located right just above it. The sink as well, I do have to admit that the waves do give it a nice ambience. The soap dispenser didn't appear to be working at first, but it got there in the end, and wouldn't stop dispensing the soap afterwards. The tap was relatively well filled and seemed to be flowing very well, and working as it should. The dryer is also working perfectly fine, therefore it is a thumbs up from me. Although the soap dispenser does require a bit of improvement. Anyways, it's now time to head back to my seat. Oh, and I can't leave out this little piece of amusing Scottish signage, showing off the free Wi-Fi, although I had 4G so this wasn't necessary. Fair play to ScotRail for this. Right, conclusions. Overall, I believe that the ScotRail Express trains are an absolutely solid product and have truly revolutionised travel on the flagship Edinburgh to Glasgow route. Although, I do have to admit that the ride was rather jerky, particularly when stopping at stations. But nevertheless, these trains are still an absolute improvement to what they replaced, and I look forward to using them more when I take further trips north of the border. I would also say that the Class 385 is great value for money and provides a sleek and modern express service. Anyways, that's it from me, and welcome to Glasgow. And having just passed through Cowlairs Tunnel, we are now on the final approach to Glasgow Queen Street, our final stop on our journey today. Just to the left, we can see one of ScotRail's Inter 7 City HST trains, which I will be having a look at soon on this channel, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss the video. As we finally disembark from the train and arrive into Scotland's second largest city, I really would like to thank you for coming along with me on this ride today. If you did enjoy the video, please do give it a like, as well as share it, as that really does help the channel to grow. If you did enjoy this video and would like to see more content such as this, why not consider subscribing to the channel, as well as enabling notifications, as I am now publishing new videos every Friday at 5pm. Anyways guys, it's now time for me to go grab some lunch and then continue my journey onwards. So, take care, stay safe, and I'll see you next Friday. Goodbye.